giving you an opportunity to get the full story from the people who tell it best. This is Mediacom News Leaders. Everyone and welcome to Mediacom News Leaders. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Carol Kelly. Joining us today from the city of Cedar Rapids, the police department going to be talking about the voluntary surveillance camera registration program. We've got Greg Bulow. Greg, welcome. Hi, Carol. Good to be here. Sorry to give you such a mouthful about the program. <laughs> yeah, tell us a little bit about this program just launched here in Cedar Rapids. Yeah, well, first of all, we need to come up with a smaller acronym for it. But <laughs> essentially, many people in Cedar Rapids have surveillance systems in or around their homes. And what the police department is asking is that if you choose to do so, please let us know if you have a surveillance system and you're willing to share footage if there would happen to be a crime in your neighborhood. We believe that this voluntary registration program will aid in criminal investigations and actually be a deterrent to crime in our community. Again, it's a voluntary program. If a person has a surveillance system, we're looking for camera footage that's pointed to public areas to the outside and if you have something like this and you're willing to share that information with the police department, it really will make investigations more efficient. Tell us about how easy it is to get signed up for the program and what, uh, what that means for a homeowner. Yeah, well, simply all you have to do is go to our website, which is cedar-rapids.org forward slash police. Go to our main page and there's a link for the voluntary surveillance camera registration program. It asks you for your name and address. All this information will go into a database. It will be for law enforcement purposes only. There will be no public access to it. And essentially what happens is if there's a crime in a specific neighborhood in Cedar Rapids, law enforcement officers can go into this database and see that these certain neighbors have signed up for the voluntary registration program and they can contact them immediately and say, can you look at your footage and see if you see anything that might aid in the investigation. Now, what typically happens is if there's a crime in a neighborhood, law enforcement officers have to canvas and they have to go door to door and knock and ask if anybody happens to have any camera footage and if they're willing to share it with the police department. This eliminates one of those steps. We already know where somebody may have some camera footage and then officers can contact them and really more efficiently work that investigation. And Carol, I can't tell you how important that is. There was a homicide last year in which the suspect was seen going in between homes after the homicide and also breaking into buildings. And this was a opportunity that was vital to the prosecution in order to get a successful first degree murder conviction to be able to show that actual footage. And you cannot believe how uh, important that was to the actual investigation as well. It doesn't have to be a homicide. I mean, that's, that's probably one of the ultimate crimes that we can think of, but it could be property crimes or anything in between that it could aid in the criminal investigation. Are there surveillance camera requirements? No, there are no requirements. There's no quality uh, requirements or, or certain types. What we're looking for are the ones that are focused on public uh, spaces. We don't want to see any camera footage of inside people's homes. We don't want to violate anybody's privacy. So we're looking at footage that's pointed towards the front yard, the street, towards alleyways, towards driveways, those kind of areas where you might see a suspect uh, that would be able to aid investigators in the investigation. There was a recent 48 hours episode where a guy was using a camera outside looking for deer and he was recording it and all he had was a shadow of a person walking on a street that ended up there was a homicide there and they were able to figure out by the person's gait, by the way they were walking and also the shape of the person able to lead them to a suspect. So it's used nationwide and it's also been very useful from everything from porch pirates, those that steal packages off the front steps of somebody's home, to homicides like I mentioned earlier. Will uh, this database ever become public? No, this is for law enforcement purposes only and we will not share that. What we will ask people to do is every year after they sign up they'll get an email and see if they want to remain in the program. They do have the option to opt out if they no longer want to share that. But if there actually is an investigation, they'll knock on the door and say, can we get a copy of that, that footage, look through it, see if you see anything that's, that's beneficial, obviously, to investigators. And uh, then they can choose whether or not to release that information. So really, it just eliminates a huge step in the criminal investigation. Very easy to sign up. Just go to the website, right. and you can learn more information there. Correct. Thanks for joining us, Greg. Thank you, Carol. This has been Mediacom News Leaders, your opportunity to get the full story from the most reliable sources exclusively on Mediacom News Leaders.